Hey, yep. We finally seem to be getting some nice weather. I was out walking Willow this morning and the sun was shining, it was dry, it was warm and there was no wind. It looks like this year's biking season is just around the corner. Right, as I promised a few weeks ago, a friend of mine has a Triumph Bonneville T120 of 1962 vintage. And I thought it might be fun to do an aesthetic comparison between the two bikes, just to see how closely the modern water cool triumphs are modelled on the original 1959 T120. Because that was the claim that Triumph made when they released the water cool Bonnevilles. Now, just for those that are interested, this 1962 Triumph Bonneville T120 is for sale. The owner has just moved house and he needs to make some space and he's made the decision that this bike has to go. If you're interested, I'll leave my email address in the video description down below. Get in touch with your name and a contact number and I will pass the details on to him. I think realistically you should only consider it if you live in the UK as he is selling it strictly on a buyer collect basis. This is actually a 1962 export model which has been re-imported back into the UK from California and then sympathetically restored. I'm assured it's 99% original, which is more than you can say for my T120, and apparently all the serial numbers match. Now, I didn't ride this bike because it's not mine and it's undoubtedly more valuable than my T120, but if you hang around until the end, he did actually start it up for me just before he took the bike away after I'd finished filming, and it did actually start first kick, and I'll play that little sequence towards the end. Now, I did have a look at the historically accepted specifications for this bike listed on one or two websites, some of which didn't match up in the flesh. The most notable ones being the wheel sizes, maybe because this was an export model, it came with larger wheels, I don't know. But what we basically have here is a 649cc twin four-stroke, 46 horsepower at 6,500 revs, a stated top speed of 115 miles an hour, which sort of makes a mockery of the T120 moniker, because that was supposed to indicate it was capable of 120 miles an hour. But that's Triumph for you. Twin ML monoblock carburettors. Think the UK version only had one carburettor. Overhead valves and Lucas K2F Auto Advance Magneto, although I should say that this bike has been converted to electronic ignition. It's an cool bike, four-speed gearbox, and a wet multi-plate clutch. Now, by comparison, the modern liquid-cooled Triumph Bonneville T120 that first came into being in 2016, which is when I got mine, is again a twin four-stroke engine, this time pumping out 79 horsepower, but this time with a 1200cc engine displacement, injection multi-point sequential electronic fuel injection, single overhead cam, and a five-speed gearbox, again with a wet multi-plate clutch. So, in reality, with the 50-odd year hiatus between the two models, per CC, the new Bonneville hasn't actually gained much in performance, although, you know, that wasn't really the aim. Now, first of all, I suppose we ought to discuss where the Triumph Bonneville's name came from. Throughout the 1950s, Johnny Allen made several world speed record attempts on the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah in the USA. Eventually, in 1956, setting a record of 214.4 miles an hour in his streamliner powered by a Triumph engine. And this is part of Triumph's history, if you like, that I've always found to be a bit distasteful. Something that sort of set the tone for Triumph's business practices, something which carries on even till today. You see, Johnny only used the Triumph engines because he had a plentiful supply of them, and on several occasions he approached Triumph for both financial and technical assistance, and they told him in no uncertain terms to do one they weren't interested. 
So, Johnny's successful record attempt was done solely at his expense using his expertise, using engines that he'd purchased himself. Triumph had no part of it. However, once he'd shattered the record, Triumph swooped in and basically claimed all the glory. They adopted the sales slogan, the fastest motorcycle in the world, which was actually plagiarised from a contemporary news article. A news article referring to Johnny's creation, the Devil's Arrow, which had utilised pretty unremarkable Triumph engines, which had only managed to break the speed record because of his innovation and tuning skills. It had nothing to do with Triumph. And in 1959, they released a new model which was actually based on the previous Speed Twin and called it the Triumph Bonneville. First impressions between the two when you first look at them. To me, the older bike looks far more graceful. It's got that thoroughbred look about it, something that to my man, the new Bonneville has lost. Now, I'm sure a lot of this has to do with catering for modern taste, but the older bike to me looks like an Arab thoroughbred compared to the new version, which is sort of a cart horse. Short and stocky, aesthetically, to me, the exact opposite. I think the difference in wheel size plays a big part of this. This 1962 example has 19 inch wheels, front and rear which I think visually helped to stretch the bike out a bit. But I think the biggest culprit are the engines. The space underneath the fuel tank on the modern Bonneville is much more cluttered. Not just because of the larger 1200cc engine, but also the peripherals that are required for liquid cooling. It has lost that airiness of the original. But having said that, they have, in a way, managed to retain the visual cues of the engine from the original. It's not exactly a mirror image of the original, but it's close enough to pay a visual homage to that original twin engine. Looking at the bodywork and starting with the fuel tanks, actually putting aside the different tank badges and the two-ton paint job on the older version, the light like two peas in a pod, the original tank doesn't seem quite as tall, but I'm pretty sure that's down to the fact that it's a seamless tank, whereas the modern version isn't. I think Triumph have captured the profile beautifully. The original Bonneville was of course intended as an export model, primarily for the US market, and to that end the petrol cap was placed on the right hand side of the tank. A convenient location aimed to make it easier for the Yanks to fill up the petrol tanks when they're pulled into the side of the road at a station. This is echoed in the modern version but it's not quite as off centre as it was on the original. Likewise the side panels on the modern day T120 are a pretty close facsimile to the original which was actually an oil tank. Triumph have captured the shape and the essence of this part very well. And in both cases, they form part of the air filter assembly. As you can see on the 1962 version, the, the air filter assembly has been removed and it simply had the carburetors fitted with a bell mouth. I'm not sure if these AML monoblock carburetors have been replaced or with some sort of factory upgrade, but they don't really look the same as the sort of false monoblock carburetors that the modern Triumphs fitted with. They're not a million miles away, but they're not the same, and I'm sure that's probably down to some sort of upgrade that this bike's had in its 50-odd year history. On the original bike, the fenders or mudguards are in both cases made of steel, and they are very similar to those items fitted on the current models, although obviously I've removed mine. The rear light assembly as well is pretty close, which again I no longer have. So once again you'll just have to take my word for it that the current Triumph made a pretty good job of matching the new model up with the old model in that respect. Both bikes sit on chromed steel rims and I have to say the modern day Triumph iteration got the profile of these wheels very close. The resemblance is much closer on the front than it is on the back because obviously on the back of the modern bike you have a rather wide 
but small 17 inch rim so the central rib has lost some of its definition but once again i think they did a reasonable job of matching these up the biggest aesthetic difference obviously is going to be the braking systems back in the day it was good old-fashioned drum brakes a single drum front and rear unfortunately due to modern legislation requiring anti-lock braking and the fact that people probably wouldn't put up with drums these days the liquid cold t120 has a single disc at the back and dual discs at the front the cockpit arrangement and the front headlamp on both bikes aesthetically are very similar obviously in the new version some alterations have been inevitable due to the modern refinements and some of the rider aids that are fitted to the new bike i prefer the 1962 version myself it looks more minimal although it does have a steering damper that obviously the modern version doesn't require and switch gear on the original version is virtually non-existent i think all it basically has is a horn what I did notice, which was really nice to see, is that the original version was fitted with original Doherty levers. Far nicer than the generic mismatched ball end levers that come as standard on the current models, in my opinion. The front fork suspension setups are very similar aesthetically on both bikes, although I would say the original version does look a little bit skinnier to me compared to the current model and in both cases rear suspension is taken care of by hydraulic struts although the original version typical of the time was a shrouded version rather than an exposed spring and of course uh, i can't show you the originals because the rear shock absorbers on my t120 were upgraded some years ago so that's a brief verbal comparison just highlighting some of the features between the two bikes to give you an idea realistically just looking at this footage that's playing now gives you a far better idea of the differences between the two than any words can give you and yes my t120 has been modified quite heavily so although it's not a perfect example for comparison i think visually it still gives you a fair idea Now, in a moment or two, I'll let the video play out to the sound of this 1962 Triumph Bonneville T120 being started and a little bit of a listen to the engine. But before you go, thank you so much for watching this and my other videos and in doing so, helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please leave a like and consider subscribing to this channel if you're not already a subscriber. And if you do that, make sure that you hit the notification bell and ensure that your channel notifications are enabled. Otherwise, YouTube will not tell you whenever I upload a new video. I'm going to let the video play out on the glorious sound from that 1962 Triumph Bonneville now. I am, of course, going to be back next week. So until then, please, if you're riding, ride carefully and I'll see you soon.